This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 342 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, we're going to be talking about knowing your audience. Before we jump into that, I want to make sure that if you haven't already grabbed your free blog like a pro guide, that you do so. You can send me a DM on Instagram at Jenny underscore Melrose, or you can go to the blog post up for this episode and download it there. It's going to help you really start to understand how you can make sure that the structure of your post is keyword researched as well as have a content planner that's going to give you more structure as well as keep your positioning in line with who you are trying to attract. So The biggest thing that I want you to understand is your audience is key to creating successful and engaging content in your blog. We're going to be talking about ways that you can explore the importance of knowing your audience and how it can help you attract and retain loyal readers. You're going to learn how to identify your target audience, analyze their interests and preferences, and tailor your content to their needs. So whether you're a new blogger or a seasoned pro, we're going to be able to help you unlock the secrets of blogging success by building a strong connection with your audience. The way in which we're going to start, and this goes for across the board, if you are a new blogger or if you already have an established blog, you have to be doing audience research. You have to understand who it is that you are ideally trying to attract to your content. And if you are doing that, if you are already established, if you have an avatar, which is something that you absolutely should create. And if you haven't, definitely go over to the episode where we talked about and you're building your avatar so that you know exactly who you're talking to. You want to think about that person and then check once you're established to see if that person is part of your audience and who is continually interacting with you and engaging with you. Now, in order to do this, you have to create that avatar and identify your target audience for your blog. You do not want your target audience to be 20 to 60. That is too wide of a range. You need to niche down and think who would be your ideal target audience audience. Because if you have an audience range where everyone can buy your product or uh, come to your blog or get your services, then what's going to happen is you're not going to attract anyone because they're not going to know who you're actually talking to. Because the way in which you talk to a 20 year old is very different than the way in which you would talk to a 60 year old. It's also very different on the social media platforms that you would use in order to do that. So really start to think about that avatar and who you are talking to is going to help you establish that target audience for your blog. Now, when we're looking at our audience, there's things that we need to know. I brought up the fact of age. You want to have an age range. And I would say if you can kind of pick a generation Generation X, um, boomers, whoever it is that your is your audience, target audience you're trying to go for, that is what I would recommend. I would also, when you're looking at this, think about male, female. What is their family makeup? Do they have children? Are they still single? Are they married? What part of life are they in? Are they in retirement where they have more time for themselves to kind of do what it is that they want to be able to do? Or are they in a place right now where they're building their family, they're building their life to try to get to that point? Do they not have a lot of time because there's lots of littles around, toddlers, babies, or are they at an age where they have college kids that are off kind of doing their own and maybe have that empty nest kind of syndrome. So really start to identify what it is about your audience that you are going to be able to connect with. And I think that it's important when you do this to speak to what it is that you know. It would be difficult for me to speak to someone who is never necessarily had kids if I'm giving examples of having children. If I were to try to talk to families that have large families, that have 
six and more children. That's not something I can do. I have two. (laughs) I don't understand the pain points that you are potentially trying to get through. So think about your own situation and who you're going to identify best with. That becomes your target audience. Now, there are going to be outliers. I absolutely have people in my audience who don't have kids yet, but I still am able to speak to something that they are connecting with, whether it's the fact that I'm a former inner city school district teacher, whether it's the fact that I was a food blogger that sold my food blog. There's all different ways that people will connect to that. But when you are trying to come up with your target audience, that's what's most important. Because those common characteristics is what you are always going to speak to when it comes to your audience. Now, In order to identify whether or not the target audience that you are going to is actually coming to your site um, or will come to your site, you have to be looking at analytic tools to better understand your audience. You want to make sure that you are looking at your Google Analytics, you're looking at your audience and what content they are coming to, where they are coming from, and you also want to make sure that you have Google Search Console set up so that you can see what Google is already determining the keywords that you are going to rank for because they are already sending people to you for that type of content. Now, if you don't have your blog set up yet and you're just starting to think about this, these are two things that I want you to get set up so that right out of the gate, you'll have your information set up to give you the analytics that you need to better understand and analyze whether or not your target audience is who you are actually reaching. Now, Earlier in this episode, I talked a little bit about the idea of social media, that you need to understand that you can't have this wide range of 20 to 60 because let's be honest, they use different social media platforms. Now, uh, you will always hear me say social media, do not build your business on rented property. That is why I talk often about a blog and your email list, how important they are both to grow so that once you have someone come to you, they can be return readers. We want them to routinely come back to you. With social media, you are looking to give them an opportunity to engage with you, to get to know more about them, to have conversations with them. It is not necessarily, social media is not necessarily meant to drive traffic to your content. It is more meant for the people that are already following you to continue to engage with you so that you can get to know more about them and continue to solve the problems that they have. So when you're looking at your analytics in social media, make sure that you take that into consideration. If you notice that all of a sudden you have a different audience over on Instagram than you do on your blog, what is the benefit? How is that going to help you? That tells me that you probably did some sort of trend, attracted an audience that isn't who you really are trying to attract because you did some dumb dance or you did um, a trend that was funny at that time. They got a lot of views probably with reels, but now you have this audience on Instagram that isn't your ideal customer, that isn't your person that's going to buy and come back to you as a routine user. So now you have these inflated numbers that don't actually have an engagement. So really start to look at social media as the content that you're going to put out is to continue to engage the readers that you already have for the content that you're already creating. You're repurposing your blog content in order to give them a more personalized opportunity to ask you questions, to get into your comments, to get into your DMs. That is the purpose of social media so that As you look at how can I continue to grow my audience and build a community around my blog, you can use your social media. You absolutely need to be growing your email list because again, that is something that you own, that you can send them routinely back to. You should be emailing them a minimum of once a week when you have new content come out and to also send them to old content. Just because you published something six months ago does not mean that you can't email them about that and let them get over to that content and read it. You want to be able to build that community and that sense of having a belonging. And that is what you should be doing with your email list. All right, you guys, if you haven't already grabbed your Blogging Like a Pro Guide, please make sure that you do, as well as if you haven't left a rating and review, I would so appreciate it if you took the time to do so. All right, until next time, I will see you all then. (music) 